You get into position at the base of your bench, dropping the thighs behind the weights, sitting down, boost, back, position, press, knees touch, boost out, and then standing up, everything in reverse. Ta-da! Hi guys, it's Patrick at Trick9 Fitness, and today I'm going to talk about how to do a dumbbell chest press by yourself, probably at home. Now, there's a, there's a few things I'm assuming about this situation. Now, like uh, if you're at home, chances are you have less of a gym-like situation with like dense uh, concrete rubber padded floors um, and equipment that you can just toss around with just total disregard for whether, you know, how much it costs because your membership is $15 a month. <laughs> if you bought your own equipment, you know that it's um, less likely that you're going to be comfortable throwing it around. Uh, if you're doing, you know, exercises on your own home floors, it's less likely that you're going to want to drop dumbbells. Um, you know, for all you basement gym guys and gals out there, great, drop the dumbbells if you want. I rarely drop dumbbells, even when I'm at the gym. I like to, I like to consider entry and exit of the exercises under control, manipulating the weight. I like that to consider that all part of my workout. Um, I, I get, I get satisfaction out of, you know, picking weights up, moving with them, getting into positions with them. All of that I consider functional exercise in addition to like the chest press that I'm doing, isolating. Um, yeah, let's talk about that. Chest press, dumbbell chest press is what we're going to get into today. Why do the jump dumbbell chest press? Well, primarily we're exercising the pectorals and the triceps. So those are the two main muscle groups that we're using. You know, every exercise involves almost every part of your body to some degree, right? But um, especially like this where we're going to be standing, picking it up, walking, sitting down with it. But the actual chest press itself is a pectoral, that's the, the chest muscles here, and the triceps, the back of the upper arms. Um, so any, any pushing exercise is going to involve those muscle groups. A pulling Exercise would be the complementary muscle groups where we're getting the biceps and the back, the front of the arm and the back of the torso. The chest press, front of the torso, back of the arms. Now, if you are at home alone, you need to know how to enter and exit the exercise safely. If you have a spotter, things are going to be way different. You can lift heavier, more confidently. You can lay down, put your hands into position, have them put the dumbbells in your hands while you're waiting. You can have them pick the dumbbells up from your hands when you're done. Um, you know, if you if you were at a gym with you know the reinforced rubber floor, and and you know those hexagonal rubber dumbbells, dropping them all over the place, great. Be careful, but um, you know, great. You can do that at home, or if you just want to do it <laughs> the way I do it, um, you're going to be doing it like this. Now, I recommend putting your dumbbells on your bench. I do not like putting them on the floor. Um, that involves, well, this, right? If we got the dumbbells on the floor, then we have to reach down and pick them up each time, which involves a whole series of movements that are just less than ideal for the amount of weight that you will eventually be pressing in a chest press. That's, that's a relatively heavy exercise, heavier than your curls, heavier than your sitting down and picking stuff up off the floor exercise, whatever that is. It should be relatively heavy, so we want to treat these dumbbells like they're heavy, and we want to be safe. Um, and that, to me, also involves not picking things up so that my wrist is holding them this way. This is a lot of tension to ask of the wrist. Now, these, these, are, you know, these are my demo weights for a video. I'm not, I'm not maxing out right now. Uh, so, you know, I'm going to hold it like this, but when I'm trying to lift heavy, I'm not trying to lift and hold things this way. My chest press weight 
rests upon a pillar of a forearm in line with gravity. So I like to handle my dumbbells in line with gravity whenever possible. Um, curls, grrr, that's different. That's part of the exercise. But when I'm lifting heavy and that's not part of the exercise, I like to leave them where I can grab them with a vertical oriented forearm. So either I'm grabbing them down or I'm holding them up here. I'm not going to be <laughs> lifting them perpendicular to gravity. So I've got them on the bench. You know, you can do this at the gym, you can do this at home. If your rack is right there, pick them up and put them back on the rack. They're, they're like grabbable height. Great. Here, you've claimed your bench at the gym. Great. It works. And that way, you can pick it up safely for your wrist. You get into position at the base of your bench. Now you should already know that you don't want to be figuring out with heavy weight in your hands where the bench is and where you end up when you sit on it. You should already have a little orientation. You know, sit down on a bench. Let me get these out of here for a second. <laughs> You should already know. So here's your bench. You should already know where do your feet need to be to sit down and then lay down so that you're in your position. So like if I had started a little bit differently, my tailbone would be like in the crack of this bench and I wouldn't like it. I already know this is my bench in my studio. I already know where I need to stand to sit down accurately and then lay down so that I'm in the position I like to be in. So before you do this exercise, sit and lay on the bench. Sit, and then lay on the bench. Are you in position? If not, change where you sit, and then that's where your feet are, okay? So back to where we were. <laughs> Pick these up off the floor, which I don't like to do, but it's fine. These are a little bit light for today. So my feet are where they go. I know where they go and I'm holding the weights vertically. And now when I'm ready to sit down, I just let the hips drop back, put the weights on the front of the thighs. I'm not, I'm not swinging them and bashing them in with momentum. I'm dropping the thighs behind the weights, sitting down. And that way I didn't lift the weights to get them here. I had barely any tension. <laughs> you know, perpendicular on the wrist. So they're just now resting on the tops of my legs. And we want them not high on the thighs. We want them low, over the knees. Um, I should probably have told you that before we sat down. But uh, hopefully you're watching this before doing it. So, right over the thighs, right above the knees. So when I sit down, it's out over my knees. Why do we want it there? Because that, when I do my boost with my calves and Achilles tendon, very strong, you're walking around all day, that's pushing your weight up and down. When you go upstairs, whatever you do, your calves are strong. So that's the muscle we want to use to get the weight up where we want it. Not your bicep and your shoulder. We don't want to curl the weight into position. We want to boost it into position. I barely use my arms for that. <sighs> Again, boost. You want to boost it up. That's a little bit tricky. It takes a little bit of um, what? Being in sync with your body and momentum. So, I usually merge the laying down and the boosting eventually you know you'll get to what you're comfortable with um, but I do recommend bringing your knees and feet up while you lay down and then bringing them back down like this boost lay down see my knees are up over the hips and I've laid down and now I'm letting the legs back down it just uh, I do it that way because whenever I whenever I lay down while keeping the feet down I feel like there's a lot of tension in my low back. There's a lot of hyperextension. Uh, I just don't like the way 
that the, te the, um, the weight is transferred down into my spine near my hips when I keep my feet down. I'm not even going to demo it because it, I could already feel it just leaning back a little bit. <laughs> so I bring the knees up over the hips, find my position at the bottom, and now I'm ready to lift. Now I've got my elbows out slightly away from my ribs, maybe a, not quite 45 degrees, but definitely not. We're not up next to the shoulders. We're not at a 90 degree. You're not making a T. You're making more of an arrow um, from an above view. If you could see above me, my elbows are about 30 degrees away from my ribs. The weights start down near your ribs and come up over the shoulders. So they travel kind of in an arc. They don't travel a straight line. Right here, it's over my shoulder. Here, it's down next to my rib. So they come down, they're not right in line. So you do your exercise, right? You do your presses, whatever your sets and reps prescribed by your trainer is, or yourself. You do your sets and reps. I like to come down to a slightly neutral grip, meaning the palms are facing each other. And then I come up to a slightly, what is this, pronated grip, meaning the palms, if I was standing up, would be facing the floor. The palms are facing towards, you know, my feet. You know, I'm not getting locked into the perfect imaginary barbell alignment. I've got a slight angle to it. You know, this, that's the beauty of the dumbbells. You can hit any angle you want. So I come down. It's not a perfectly neutral. I don't have to hit, you know, 90 and 180 degrees. I'm not made out of boxes. I've got a slightly neutral grip, an angle, and then a more pronated grip. Down, and when you're done, you hit the bottom of your press. You're at the bottom position. You bring the knees up to the weights. Do not bring the weights to the legs right here. As soon as you compromise that vertical forearm, as soon as you compromise it and bring it at an angle, the weight gets exponentially heavier. You're going to uh, reach for the legs and then bash it into your legs. <laughs> um, you're going to be pressing the corner of the weight like into your hip flexor and it's going to hurt. Maybe not even right away. You know, a heavy weight dropped from like a half inch above your thigh may not hurt very bad. Later on, you're going to be like, what is this giant black and blue mark? Did I, go, did I sleepwalk? What happened? Yeah, it was, it was the 40 pound weight that you dropped onto your thigh from an inch, an inch above it. So, boost, come back. Well, you get into position, press, knees up, touch the weights. And in order to really get out of here, you have to kind of push a little, a little boost with the arms <laughs> to get out. A little bit of an explosive press just to get things momentum-wise getting over your center of gravity to tip out. <sighs> One more time. Boost. Back. Position. Press. Knees touch. Boost out. And then, standing up, everything in reverse. Ta-da! So, that is how to do a chest press with dumbbells by yourself. Entry and exit of the exercise is part of the exercise. If any part of that you are unable to do, then lift a little lighter. That's, that's it. Just like any other exercise, if you can't do your sets and reps, scale it back a notch or a couple notches. Consider the entry and exit part of the exercise. Oof. Yeah, picking them up, walking into position, slight bend, everything. That's you interacting with the weight and doing what you want to do with it. To me, that's, uh, that's very functional. That's why I like dumbbell chest press. If you have any questions or concerns, hit me up in the comments below. Check out my website, trick9fitness.com. I'm an online personal trainer. I'm an in-person personal trainer. I do video training. I do consultations. I'll uh, even answer some questions via email. Till next time. Thanks for watching. I'm Patrick, Trick9 Fitness.